Hey, so welcome back to Dallas Customs Project Car TV. Today I'm back on the Scout. I have looked at many, many pictures of the Scout 2 in as close to stock format as possible. And this wheel well, and I admit, I believe I am off by about a quarter to three eighths of an inch from right about here down. I think I'm too wide. Um, well, I'm basically certain I'm too wide by about three eighths of an inch. So no matter what, I need to reshape this area just a little bit, which may mean I need to cut loose this plate and just make a little slice there and move it in three eighths of an inch. But what I really don't like is the shape of these wheel wells. And this one is exaggerated right now, which is why I'm talking about it before I do anything. It, even if this was correct, it would be over, it would come down to about here and then it goes straight. So all we'd have is a little bit of a curve in here is that this curve would continue into about there and then it goes, then it draws straight and it's straight shot down. And all the pictures I look, especially when you start putting a little bit larger tire on it, when you're running the 28s, just the stock size tire, it doesn't look too bad. But once you start running 31s, 33s, and larger, what I find is it looks like this piece always wants to dive into the tire, or they've got the tire, they're, they're basically putting so much lift on it that the tire is getting set back so that it will clear this as it travels through its, through its movement. So I think what I'm gonna do is, since I know I need to adjust this anyway, and I'm gonna have to, to, to do what I wanna do, I'm gonna end up working on the other side again anyhow. Um, but I, I need to adjust this by about the 3 eighths of an inch, no matter what. And that was just an error on my part. We, we had very little metal here to make patterns from, to rebuild, and then I think I just kinda got some angles off and not very hard to fix. I could cut loose a couple of welds and this would push in and I'd probably get it all without ever touching the back plate. That said, I just don't like it. I like from about the center over, I like that beginning of that curve. So somewhere right in here, we're gonna start, we're gonna lay this piece of cardboard. What I'm gonna do, is I don't think I'm gonna change the back shape. It kind of mimics the front fenders enough that I'm going to leave that alone. But what I want to do is imagine this curve continuing. And I want it to continue to curve in or curve like so. Sketch in something that you think you like. And then once you're close, we'll go ahead and darken it up. And while this part is gonna get straight, we have curve way down to here now instead of way back up here. And basically, I think I like this shape. You can kind of see it. Draw in the rear one, it comes in like this. So you can get an idea. I think I like that shape a lot better than what they originally had. So what we're gonna do is just come in, pick, pick our curve, and then we'll cut this piece out, because it's laying right on the door jam, and we will recreate this panel with this curve in it. And then this piece becomes, so we'll mark this side as driver, this piece becomes our pattern for the other side as well so that we can duplicate it exactly. And I think I just like having more of a rounded fender on this front side. And it, we don't ever want it to start curving back in. It, we'll want it to, once we get to where, to a point where we need to curve back in to continue, we'll make it straight. But I think that's gonna be 
the change that I want to make and will make me happy with how the truck finishes out. Now is kind of the perfect time to do this because we had a few pieces still to make. We needed to make our lower rocker panels pieces and I think I'm going to rebuild the whole rocker and this Bondo filled scabbed together piece of junk is what we had to try and find our curve and you can see if we used this our our panel would be way over here probably three quarters of an inch and it drops from right about here on it drops straight down so we're just basically going to open it up a little bit and move the straight part over and then so what i'll do is to to be able to reset this form is i'll mark the edges with probably a silver sharpie so it'll show up really well and we'll get this piece made and then we still have to do some work up here in this wheel well but i can do that once this piece is here and i can continue the same shape all the way around so one other thing i'm going to do before i do this work is this door when closed looks like it's sagging and the hinges are actually have no play in them that I can feel. So I think it's just that the door is completely out of adjustment. So before we make this panel and start trying to get this gap right, what I want to do is get the door readjusted to where, because like now even the pinstripes don't line up and those would have obviously lined up when they were put on in uh, the late 80s. So we're going to go ahead and get the door realigned, get the top even get this gap as close as we can then we'll come back finish out this little pattern and we'll build this pattern the understructure to come to it and then we'll build our rocker to line up to the bottom of the door so that's going to be my day three b pillar repair slash modification and then just straight up if you were just going to do this repair, all you would need to do is come up with a pattern for this gap and fill it in and then as well as the rocker panel. So while we're making some changes here to make it more aesthetically pleasing to me, the overall look or the overall work process is just the same. I'm just going to go in and change my understructure a little bit from what I originally built. Okay, for those of you who have never adjusted a door before, um, you always adjust the door to the quarter panel, and if your rocker panel was good, you would adjust to those two fixtures. In this case, our rocker panel is crap, but our quarter panel has a good straight edge on here, so we're going to adjust the door to match the rocker panel. The adjustments are you have two hinges. Typically what you have are a couple two three bolts that mount the door to the A pillar and then you have some kind of mechanism that mounts the hinge to the door. If you play with the lower hinge on the A pillar side that's going to allow this side to move in and out. The upper hinge is going to allow this side to move in and out. You're adjusting two factors there. First when you adjust the bottom hinge in and out, what your the door works diagonally. So you are also, even though you think you're moving this out, the more you move the bottom hinge out, the more you move the top hinge in, or the top of the door in on this corner. Same here. If you move this hinge out, this part goes in. And vice versa. Moving it in moves this part, or moving this part out moves that in, move this in, moves it out. So you use the top hinges to control how you fit on the quarter panel by moving them in opposite directions. Then on the door, which I've got to remove this door panel to get to these, on the door side, the adjustment in there is how you move this door up and down because in this case, these come back as straight panels or something similar. And we can move in and out and up and down with some diagonal. So let me get this door panel off so we can get to the other part of the hinge and get all our adjustments going on. OK, 
Okay, so just in this door took, oh, I don't know, over an hour. It took quite a bit longer than I had hoped. Um, so what had to happen is the back of this door, the door was kind of leaning like this. I'm exaggerating a lot. But this upper lip, even when latched, was still down about a quarter of an inch, and the latch was picking the door up. Additionally, this gap was nowhere near uniform, let alone, you know, a nice even gap as far as depth. It was, it was narrower at the top, wider at the bottom. Then when you looked at the bottom of the door, the door itself was buried into the rocker panel on one side, uh, at the front actually, it was buried into the rocker panel at the front and had a big gap out here at the bottom you could put your fingers through. Um, and then, so what I did was play with all the hinge adjustments and it took quite a bit of work. I also had to move the striker uh, plate, but what it took was basically to reorientate the door this way, pull the door back towards the jam just a little bit, towards the quarter panel a little bit. And once I got that pretty close, then I still had to get the door twisted properly. We had, it, it was in about a half an inch, or a quarter inch up here at the top. It was past the quarter panel out here. It was sticking way out. And like I said, this front corner was buried into the uh, rocker panel to where it would have been taking paint off or had been. So now what we've got is the door, we've got a nice gap here. The door opens smoothly, actually smoothly. There's no rubber in there, so it's it, you have to make sure you pull it back out. Um, it follows the quarter panel very nicely, at least down to this point, and then we're gonna make this panel essentially follow the shape of the door because that's what we have to give us the shape and the curve. And we have a nice even gap along the bottom of the rocker or the bottom of the door between it and the metal of the rocker panel. And so we're going to be rebuilding that rocker panel. And as we do that, we'll line that up to the edge of the door. So the door now, we'll tight, make sure all the bolts are, are dead on tight. We'll tighten up the striker and this door is adjusted so that everything is lined up. And then when we go to put the fender on, we'll bring the fender in and match the front of the door. So that's, took a little longer than I would have liked. The job is done. And it just takes patience and playing with it. Now something I could tell you about hinges and adjusting them is on most Chevrolet's Fords, you can get away with leaving one of the bolts loose, so you're just kind of tightening two. Don't use an impact. Take the time, do it by hand. To get everything snug and tight, you'll, you'll eventually just ruin the bolts with an impact. On the International, if you're doing that, there's one bolt deep down inside this A-pillar. It takes a long extension. If that bolt doesn't get tightened each time, you never get the adjustment quite right, so you end up Essentially, on the on the A-pillar side, you end up tightening and, and releasing each all three bolts on each hinge every time. And you see our pinstripes don't line up, yet the door now matches the quarter panel probably better than it ever has before, at least since it was painted, because they had it down about an eighth of an inch, which would have had the tops of these of the door and the top of the quarter panel misaligned. So we got that corrected. We have a nice even gap down through here. Can't count the cardboard because it's not necessarily straight, but we're gonna make our panel straight. So now we can go back and work on our, our curve in the fender. And we'll just kind of look at it one more time. It's just one of those reasons to, to not just blow through a project. Sometimes you just need to stop and look at it and see if you like what you're looking at. So I do, I like my curve. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this, probably just a little bit large. We'll line this square edge up with the door and then we'll make sure we're coming back to this and we'll put lines everywhere with some silver Sharpie so that we can duplicate this on the other side when we're done. Okay, well. 
Now that some of that's out of the way, I think you get a pretty good idea of the goal here. The, the edge of this lip that we made is like right over here. So we're going to be taking out almost an inch of material to get it shape a nice curve. And uh, of course this piece needs to have the outer portion of the rocker built into it. Something like that. So you can see we're going to take out quite a bit of this. And that's fine. We'll just make a new piece, fill it back in, and we'll have to change the back panel just a little bit to, to accommodate. This sticks out a little over an inch anyway, so some of it's just going to be hidden pretty easily there. Okay, so we've put the, the uh, shape into this flange here that I welded in a backing plate or whatever to it so that it's kind of a piece of channel again to allow the, put strength in it for the quarter panel. The next thing we need to do is make the piece of rocker panel that goes from this edge to the door. And it is shorter or closer into the inner rocker than the rest of the rocker changes again at the front, and that's because the skin has to be able to come down over and past it. So I just made a short piece, and I made this out of 14 gauge, um, and I took the little chunk that was off of here and copied it. Okay, so those of you who are doing this for scout, the top flange used to be two inches, the face used to be an inch, this lower face, I guess, needs to be one and seven eighths, then an inch and an eighth, and then three quarters of an inch. So you need six and a half inches of material to go all the way around that. So I cut a piece uh, nine inches long and six and a uh, six and I think I said six and a half, six and three quarter inches long, and then fit it in here. And your angles are the first one is a 90, then a 45, 45, and a 90. It's a very simple thing. And like I said, it is shorter, narrower, closer, whatever you want to say, into the inner rocker so that the outer rocker would actually stick out past it. And so we'll build the outer rocker and then it'll curve in where the sheet metal comes down over this. So this is just a structural piece, which is why I went ahead and made it out of 14 gauge. It's also short enough I could bend it up here without any problems. So that's going to go in there. And then, yes, it's long. And what we'll do is we'll use our form again, since we've changed in the shape of everything. And we'll come down and we'll get the curb in there. So I'm going to go ahead and get this tacked in, and then we'll get our form back up and shape it. So I went out to the other shop and I used our pattern and I made the basic shape here. Um, put a 90 on this side, put a 90 over here, and then just had to shrink it a little bit in this area to keep it from buckling as I was bending it. Well, now this. This quarter panel has a curve kind of coming out. It's, it's convex. So we need to, from about maybe here to over here, we need to shape this to give it a little bit of, of curvature. And that's going to require stretching the metal. So we'll put this in the English wheel and we'll stretch so that we get this curve. And it looks to me like we need between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch. Um, then, starting like right about here, we need to start rolling this panel under. And it's way too long, but that's just so we have plenty of material to work with in both the English wheel 
and just handling it. But we need to start rolling this panel in so that it catches the curvature of the wheel well back here. Now, whoever did the bodywork last time, we've kind of talked about that a little bit. They just used Bondo. I mean, there's a quarter inch of Bondo right here. They used Bondo to build this up to get that curvature. So when, as we'll keep taking some of this Bondo out as we replace the metal across there, and we'll bring the metal back out to where it should be. But we need to build this curve. Like I said, it starts right about here. Actually, I'm lying to you. It starts right about here. And I'm looking at the door jam, trying to figure out about where it needs to start curving in. And what that will require is we need to shrink this side, twist this in, and we're going to probably have to shrink some in here to keep it curving. So we'll put an English wheel on it and we'll curve it this way. Then we'll use the shrinker and start shrinking these L's, this edge, and that'll tuck it in. And then we'll probably have to go back to the English wheel and straighten it out and all that. But it's just a process of back and forth between an English wheel and the shrinker to add the curve to where it kind of follows all in. Okay, so before we start on our panel, I'm just going to show you. I put a pretty low shaped wheel here. You can see that it rides just on that little area right there for the most part. You can get one with a high crown and it'll quickly put a curve in your metal or you can do the flatter and it'll it takes a little longer it's more gradual this is a I've got two that are a little bit flatter than this but this one seems to do a pretty good job so if we're going to call this the top or the outside of our panel and if we roll the wheel we'll say uh, outside panel this would be the top this would be down this would be the bottom down by the uh, uh, rocker panel so if we roll this in here, and these are awesome for pinching your fingers, so careful. If we roll this in here, what you're doing is you, as you roll, you constantly moving it back and forth across the panel. Okay, we're rolling only one direction. show you this but so now you can see there's a curve to that panel so if we run it if we run the wheel this way it curves this way because essentially you're stretching this metal in the middle making it uh, making there more material here in the middle so it wants to create that convex shape um, if we ran it the other way, it would do it this way, but whatever the top is, is going to be the high part of your crown. So if you're trying to, if you're trying to reverse it, then you need, you know, this, basically the big wheel is flat and this is curved. So we're curving around that wheel following the, the contour of this wheel. So tighten that up just a little bit. It'll go a little quicker. There you go, you can see a little more of it now. So that's how the English wheel is going to work. And we just need to put our panel in it. There you go. 
can now see the curve that we've added to this panel. So that takes care of that part of it. Although I think we want a little more down here on this far end. So now we need to curve this this way. So on that, we're gonna go over to the shrinker and we're gonna shrink this area. We're gonna shrink this area and that's gonna pull it in. Now it would be terribly helpful if I had all these tools and the vehicle really close together, but I don't. So that will come in time when I can do that without. So we're going to start up here where we said it started curving in. We just start shrinking this up. We don't need to do a whole lot all at once. So we're going to go back and forth quite a few times. You can see the curve coming into this panel. see how it's curved and it's not uniform because we haven't shrunk this side yet so we'll go down through it the same way one one time up one time back and we will begin to see that same curvature come about We're getting a pretty good curve. I actually put a little more on this one than I did the other. That was because it already had some shrinking going on. So I'm going to, I think we can stand to do this side one more time. The only thing I'm trying to do now is just make them uniform. That's a good start. We can go give this a test fit. See what it looks like after that. Okay, so I just came back from the building with the shrinker and the stretcher. And the first test fit tells me I've already started a little too much. Well, actually, probably not. Probably what I need to do is start trimming some of this off, uh, mostly on this flange side here and probably a little bit on the front side over here, but definitely on this side, because what's happening is that my flange is running into this inner panel. You can see we now have, well, you may not be able to see it in there, but we're almost even with the metal here now. I think I'm gonna put just a little more curve here. So I'm gonna run it through the, and that's just, I'm gonna probably run it here and over here mostly so that I kind of stretch the metal right here and stretch the metal right here in these areas to kind of increase that, that convex shape. The center is in real good shape. So it's just over here and over here that I want to do a little more work in the in the wheel. And then I'm going to go ahead and trim this off. And we'll see how close we are to getting this to curving under. I want to climb out so that when it's not hitting this area, 
and you see this whole quarter panel is loose so that's why I keep using that clamp I'm trying to bring the quarter panel out to where it should be so that as I test fit this panel I'm lined up with right, so now we're hitting the internal structure right there based on what I'm seeing I need to just modify that internal structure a little bit to let this curve come in just a hair more kind of looking down it like this, I'm out a little bit from where the rear one is. So it's this brace right here that's causing us a little bit of an issue. I'm not taking this piece off, I'm just cutting a little wedge in it so that it has a little more curvature to it. And we can just keep doing that until we get, and looking down it, it looks like a nice curve that kind of matches the rear. So my eyeball at least. And so what I think we need to do is put a few bins in it to make it match our what's going to be our rocker panel. And we'll come in, we'll put an actual brake line right there, just enough that it begins to tuck. Put another one down here just two inches lower, inch and seven eighths from the other, actually it'd be about two inches based on the on this rocker. And what that's going to do is allow us to bring this rocker into this panel. What I'm going to do is get a, just a straight edge that I can build off of this and go straight across with it. Okay, so I stretched this area a little bit, that flattened it out. There's a little bit of a high spot right here, so I need to stretch that. And then that should kind of open that back up, lowering this panel. I've got the gaps a little tight here, so I'm going to try and shove that panel that way when I start to weld. And then for the body line, what we need is something like this so we're going to put a little break here and I'll just start to kick it it won't take very much because it's already on a curve and then do the same thing down here with this lower body line. So we'll break this one again just to kick it a little bit more and then we can trim the bottom to make it all tie in to our uh, lower rocker control or you know uh, uh, lower rocker structure um, overall i think we're pretty darn close to having a nice patch panel in here um, i added a little bit of curve here and a little bit here i think that's going to help when we start welding it to this panel so that we keep some of that shape Okay, so off camera, I just went back and forth one more time. Had a little tiny area down here I wanted to, to shrink. And I'm now very happy with this panel. So what we're going to do is line up this corner right here and get a tack weld so that this panel is in line with this corner first and foremost. Once that's in, then we can start trying to push the panel, basically push some of this curvature out and all of that towards this side so that it is nice and tight over on that side. And we'll get a tack weld somewhere over here on this clean metal because there's whatever they did here is they welded some straps in, it looks like. And then they fiberglassed over all of that. So I don't know how bad it is, but it tells me we're going to be taking a lot of that out of there. Um, so 
Okay, we got this painted up, and I almost forgot to trim off the bottom of this panel before I get that welded on. So I got it trimmed, and I left about a three-quarter inch flange here that is going to go on the bottom of this outer rocker. And I'll go ahead and punch some holes in it so that we can do some rosette welds, just like we've got on the sides. And then we're going to weld this on. Do a little finish hammer and grind it and grind the welds so that everything fits. But we'll go ahead and get this welded in now. go. Nice even seam all the way down through there. Matches the door very well. And I like it. I like this curve a little better. Or I like it better than what comes stock. I think you could even cheat this a little more and come in maybe as much as another half inch down here. Just keep that curve coming. be worth worth experimenting with but not on this truck because this one's done now just got to make another one just like it for the other side and we still have to finish welding that seam um, and stuff so we still have another probably uh, multiple days worth of work um, the rocker panel really once we get started on it will go pretty quickly the uh, this rust repair, I just don't know how, how bad it is. So I can see there's cracks up inside here and I can feel there's holes up inside the, the inner fender. I'm, I'm fairly certain we're going to be up up here somewhere chasing this Bondo out. But once we get it out, we should be able to kind of reconstruct what we want. That's it. Thanks for watching. It's day three of the B-pillar repair. And if all you had was the normal rust right in here, you'd be well on your way to being finished up. Uh, day four is going to be either a rocker panel or more in the quarter panel. I just don't know yet. Have a great day. We'll see you next time. Alice Custom Sprite Car TV. Please like and subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Uh, put links to the the RAM board that I use for my pattern making 